and being misunderstood and being run out of town. You want to be like me, but you still want to maintain your cute little image. One of them's got to go. And it's taken me almost seven months now. I have no hatred anymore. I have no bitterness. I pray for the people that did this thing. I've asked God to save them. Grant them repentance. They just got deluded. They've got deceived. They made a mistake. But I will not let them hold me hostage. No! I'm not going to die in my dilemma. I'm going to come out of this. I don't know when. I don't know how. But I'm coming out as sure as Israel came out of Egypt. I'm coming out. I'm not, I'm, please sit down. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to finish. I, I'm, not, I'm not crying in my root beer, Elder. We've talked. I've talked with different men here that have had things that have happened. I'm not using the pulpit to take a cheap shot at anybody. Cheap! <laughs> cheap! I was on my way to the plane to come here. My lawyer called me in the car. Got to talk to you, preach. When you're coming back, Friday. Got two more lawsuits. They're trying to foreclose on your building. Getting sued for another seven thousand, another sixty-two thousand. Getting sued for another. They put another lien against you. Okay. I'll be back. Well, we really need to take care of it now. I said, I ain't taking care of it now. I wanted to just jump up and said, See. But if God is drawn to empty. I'm his target, my friend. If God is drawn to need, I'm, you think I'm kidding you. I know God's going to give me a miracle. I know God's going to come to our rescue. I know we're going to have revival. I know we're going to finish our church. I know we're going to be better people for the things that we went through. Because trouble and adversity gives you a good photograph of yourself. Please be seated. I'm trying to finish here. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not preaching really good like I wanted to preach. I'm trying to help somebody here. Listen to me. You would be amazed what kind of pus and vileness can come out of you if God squeezes you in the right place. You can say, I love the Lord and I don't have no harboring for anybody. You let him steal from you. You let them humiliate you. You let a situation, I don't care whether it was building a building or buying a car or investing in a stock or having friendship with somebody. You let that thing blow up in your face. And God will reveal an aspect of you to yourself that you had no idea was there. But it wasn't to damn you. It wasn't to condemn you. It was to bring a revelation to you and I so that we can get over that and we can step up a little higher and be more like Jesus. I will not die. I will not die. I will not die. I will not. In fact, I'm going to say something else, and I won't go away either. And I ain't going to lay down and play dead either. And I'm going to take this to every pulpit that let me have in Pentecost. And I'm going to tell every pulpit across Pentecost, you can get the victory. I'm not talking about damning and condemning folks that hurt me. That's their problem. That ain't my problem. But I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to get better because of this. I'm going to get better because of this. I'm going to use this adversity to make an advancement in the apostolic realm. Oh, yes, I am. God could have stopped this. God could have cut this thing off. God could have forewarned me. He didn't do it. Why? Because he's answering my prayer. I want to be great for you. I want to be mighty for you. I want to be used of God. I want to impact my world. You cannot argue with the potter on what thing he does with the clay. I'm, I'm almost there. A few more minutes. I'm almost there. says I'm gonna make you great while you're in Egypt watch what else he says in his verse he says what do you read Mike what what do you got I like it read it watch this listen to this this is good the Lord killeth wait a minute see that's why we have a problem either we're backwards or he is 
You missed it. See, he don't play like us. He says, the only thing I can use is when I first kill it. Now, let me try it again. And the evening and the morning were the first day. He always works from darkness towards sunrise. And I don't care how terrible the darkness is, there ain't no darkness can stop sunrise. I don't care how horrendous the corridor is that some of us are climbing through right now. We are moving towards sunrise. Wait a minute, just bear with me. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. Okay, he kills first and he makes alive. Read, sit down. He, he bringeth down to the grave. Ah, no! Exalt me! I'll humble myself and you'll exalt me. God says, no, you humble yourself too carefully. I notice sometimes when you kneel down, you make sure you don't wrinkle your drawers. No, I'll, I'll bring you down. I'll roll you in the spit. Oh, yes, I will. I'll put you down where people are starting to wonder whether you're even saved. Oh, yeah, I'll give you wounds in the house of your friends. I'll roll. Oh, you're just smiling now. Like you're having fun at my expense, aren't you? He said, he bring it down and... And he bringeth up. And he brings up. Keep going. The Lord maketh poor. I'm going to the head of the class. No, no, you're not here. We should have shouted just now. Because some of you cats thought it was the devil. It wasn't the devil. It was my daddy. It wasn't the devil. It was my father because he's going to take me to a higher place. But he's got to empty me out to fill me up. He's got to bust me up to fix me up. Can I have a few more minutes? A few more. Please read for me, Brother Williams. Thank you. The Lord maketh poor and he maketh rich. Yeah, well, now wait a minute, Michael. He maketh poor, but I have a right to the other side. And he maketh rich. And if the thief be caught stealing from the righteous, the scripture says he must return sevenfold. Watch me next year, Bubba. Or the year after. All I know is I got 700% coming my way. If it doesn't come my way, God's lying. And God can't lie. I'm trying to help somebody with some trouble. Don't give the trouble credit to the devil. That devil ain't that smart. Your daddy's letting the trouble happen so that he can develop you and take you to a higher plane. A few more minutes, I'm done. Read, sir. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. Yeah. Lifted up the beggar from the dunghill. That's us. To set them among princes. Oh, my, my. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. Oh, my. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. Oh, Lord. And he hath set the world upon them. Oh, that's all I want. Now I want you to go to the next scripture. I think you had Psalms uh, 50 or something like that. Listen to this. Verse 14 and 15. Verse chapter 50. Verse 14. Offer unto God thanksgiving. Now watch. And pay thy vows unto the Most High, and call upon me. Now wait a minute. Ends a conjunction joining two thoughts together. You cannot misquote that scripture and try to misuse that principle to get yourself a Mercedes Benz. It don't work that way. It said, offer unto God thanksgiving and pay your vows first. And. Call upon me. Call upon me. In the day of trouble. So that means trouble is sure. You're not a dummy. You're not a substandard saint because you've got trouble. It's divinely orchestrated for our lives because adversity is what produces advancement. Right. Strength comes from struggle. Yeah. Muscles come from resistance. Trouble drives you to God. Comfort drifts you to the devil. Some of you right now, the greatest need in your life is not spiritual gifts. It's not talking in tongues like a Chinese laundry. What you need is a good trial. There are many great...